sext, uh, second session of the symposium. This one's on, on context. Um, we just had a very interesting uh, session about one interesting context, which is history. Um, the history of what you do and, and the things you use to create something new are, of course, are of course <clears throat> very important parts of your context at a conceptual uh, level. Um, too often, the reason why we have this session here is that too often the contexts for music are sort of taken for granted. The, the, the thing you make is seen as a thing in and of itself. The quality of the piece, of the composition, is in the piece itself, which is actually a kind of a strange idea. And the fact that you perform it somewhere makes it mean something different from the fact that you listen to it on headphones or on speakers in your in your home or wherever, in the train. Uh, and <clears throat> especially nowadays, when we have now that we have technologies that um, know where you are, telephones and and, and you know, we have MP3 players that know where you are. Um, but also the reason why you make something or why you're invited to make something or what makes you make something. Those are all important contexts uh, for making music or making any piece of art. Uh, in the 20th century, the visual arts have actually developed themselves much more in this respect than music. Music has sort of stayed focused in its, on itself, on its internal structure, on its internal workings. And in music, there's still this idea of the piece is the piece is the piece is, is itself. And it has its own qualities, which if, I'm sure it, it, it does. But once you use it as a piece of art, it needs to communicate, and it needs to communicate in a, in a specific context. We've, uh, we've gathered a bunch of speakers here that uh, all deal with this idea of context in, 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 in different ways. Uh, first, we'll have Bart van Dongen from Intro, Intro In Situ, which is a organization from Maastricht. You're based in Maastricht, right? Yes, based in Maastricht in the south of Holland, um, where they produce a lot of projects that are very location specific. So we've asked our Bart to talk about that. The second speaker will be Taco Stolk on the right there. Taco is from uh, WLFR, which is a studio for conceptualism. Yes. Taco is very conceptual, and he will be so today. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we pay him for. And uh, the third speaker is uh, is Jamie Allen from Culture Lab Newcastle in the in the, in the United Kingdom. And uh, Jamie will also address both the, the the artistic production within different contexts, but also the, the more philosophical aspects of the idea of context. And we think a lot of innovation in music will not come from essentially new technologies, but will come from creative thinking about contexts where the actual composition or the structure of the context determines the meaning of what you do. So in, in order to, to make new things in the, in, in, in the near future, we'll have to manipulate context as well. So that's why we've asked these three amazing gentlemen to uh, give us an introduction. Bart, can I give the floor to you? Thank you. Uh, back on. Um, I am uh, Bart van Dongen, um, composer, artist, and also uh, since, uh, uh, started next uh, uh, last year in uh, Maastricht at Intro in Situ. It's, it's, it's a production house for music uh, and uh, sound art. Um, if you can show up. The yes, thank you. Um, I think for me as an artist and also as for me as, as an artistic director, uh, uh, context matters. Uh, for example, when, when a composer comes to me, just say, uh, I, have, I want to write a conversation, or if I want to make something, then I shall react, do, please do that, but do that at home and not here. Because I think it is very important that the, the artists realize why and how and f for uh, which audience you, you uh, make your work. Um, and um, 
one of the things I think it's really important for, for uh, Intel is that it not only uh, uh, site-specific work, but also um, culture, cultural heritage is one of the main issues for uh, Intel Ensemble, uh, for Intel Institute, and also for me as a as a, a composer. Um, the the project you see we did last month, it was very busy. Uh, <laughs> Is, is what, uh, the, the, the main thing, for example, is the verfahren and all what verandert. Um, it's a project that starts last year or it starts earlier. Um, you have in, in, in the province of Limburg, you have an organization that's called BV Limburg and they asked uh, STEM to build new instruments based on, on the brass band marching band instruments like tuba, tuba, uh, percussion, little percussion, and the lira. They built those instruments um, and inter in situ make a new project about that. And um, the, the, we asked the composer to write a new composition for the three new instruments and five brass band uh, horn players and, and two of three percussion players. Uh, and I think that's the one of the other things that in the I think in the future it really becomes important that uh, that um, the the, uh, the art, artistic directors come to composers with a really uh, uh, um, how do you say uh, opdracht assignment. assignment. Um, and I think I, 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 for two, three weeks ago, I, I drive from Antwerp to Maastricht, and there was an interview with uh, um, the, the, the new director of the um, uh, of it, of it, uh, our, our architecture house in Antwerp, and one of the things he said: "Good architecture comes from good assignment," and I think that is really. Um, uh, true, and I think in the future for production houses of music is that one of the things we have to do: give good assignments to composers, because as, then and then work together. Because I think the, the, what Dick already said: the new kind of work becomes of 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 context and about the way you work together. For example, the the project of the Fafare is. Um, based on, 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 on three things, it's based on, on cultural heritage, it's, it's based on new instruments, and it's based on the mixture of old and new. Um, as, um, and I think that cultural heritage is very important to, to, uh, to, um, uh, to make new things. Uh, for example, I think that there is no history uh, uh, without past, and there's no and, and, you have, and you need the, uh, the future to, to um, reinvent the, the, the past, the, the history. So, um, and all the project of the, the most of the project of intro has this kind of, of mixture of old and new. And, and for example, the hummingbirds there that you see is it, um, it's an instrument. It's an instrument and an, uh, and an installation. Uh, uh, two artists, Beth Vogels and, uh, and, and um, uh, Joost van Balken, they built an, uh, for a um, carillon. They built an, uh, uh, that you play really, uh, uh, that you can become as audience really close to the, to the instrument. Normally, uh, you, you hear the carillon outside, and when you came inside of, of the um, of the tower, then it's too loud to be to, to stay there. And and they built an ins they, they built an, uh, first they built an installation for, for to 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 make that the upper tones of of, of the carillon that you came uh, could, uh, would play it and and that you came as an audience really close to, to the carillon because it was very soft. Um, and I asked them to to rebuild their installation for uh, uh, the movable carillon 
so they could play it now everywhere. So it's, it's stood now for uh, uh, 10 days in, in Utrecht on the, the Gaudiamas and Music Week. And, um, and also to rebuild the installation that it became an instrument. So now you, you can play the Canyon with a MIDI keyboard or, or, or uh, every, everything with, with MIDI, MIDI on it. You can play with the Canyon. And, and all those, all those, um, uh, uh, I have an example for you with a, uh, a photo. You see, they, they built um, a little a little bird, what moving at, at 17 uh, hertz uh, per, per, per second, but every bird has also a light in it. So it, it's not only not only music, but you have a really light uh, uh, composition too. Um, so it, it, it's again. Um, and a collaboration between the artists and Intro Institute that you became affordable. The, the, the artists built the, uh, uh, for themselves the installation, and uh, Intro Institute asked him to rebuild it for for the the, 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 the uh, movable uh, uh, carillon and that rebuilt it that you could play it as an instrument. And I think that's just for everything you do. As an artist, I think it's really important that you think about the context you, you make it. And for in, for Intro in situ, there are two things in that site specific and and a cultural heritage. The, for example, the other big project we did last m m in this month um, is uh, you see that uh, that one. It's a mask for unbelievable. Um, it was based on a on a on, on a Catholic uh, uh, a mask, but I asked the um, the uh, the composer to to write new folk music with with all the knowledge you have today, uh, and it uh, and 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 the uh, the in, the instruments are bagpipe, uh, accordion. Baroque guitar and uh, uh, violin, and the two singers and, and a young actor. But again, it, 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 you ask a composer to to make a work he never before uh, thought about that it that it was in its possibilities. And um, for him, it was in the first one really difficult. He, he could write a thing because everything he us usually uh, uh, he was used to do di it didn't work. It didn't work out well. And at the end, he, he wrote a very beautiful music. And uh, um, uh, the other thing to do, for example, is um, how how you um, uh, present music. And uh, there are now two things. That, for example, this this one. It's it's called in Dutch klankpaal. Um, it's it is it, it's movable. Uh, you can turn around and 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 there are seven. You can hear seven composi seven composition in it. Uh, one of the last work is also here. Mike Mike Kramer. He, he make an, a composition for that. Um, Based on uh, the, the sound of the mine, uh, and um, for this for example, it's 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 based. It, it could be uh, uh, also inside or, or outside. Uh, it, it 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 works on on batteries, so it could it it stays on festivals, and people uh, could hear the music the composers made for the, the, the in, in, in Dutch the klankatlas, and. Uh, and that's one of the, uh, the the main issues. What I already told uh, of intro that uh, we give uh, uh, composers assignment to make to write new compositions <coughs> with the new ideas of cultural heritage. And 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 um, and we did also give workshop to children, uh, and and they they go uh, and go in in the head of the composer, 
and, and they make new soundscape themselves. Uh, the other way, you sh the other work you see is, is, is a work of Paul Davins, is this one. Um, people sit in, in, in the middle and there are two walls turning and, and uh, uh, outside the walls are four speakers, four speakers. So, so you, so the walls are turning, and 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 every time, it, 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 what you hear is different because there's a wall of one of, of of two walls in front of you, or in the back, or something. And so it, sometimes you see a little uh, uh, of the speaker, and uh, um, so it, it, it's 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 new kinds of presentation, the context of of cultural heritage and the context of cyber specific work, that's the main issue of important and, and I think this is also very important for uh, artists to think in that way. Thank you. Thanks. Do you, do you have any examples you could play us? I have a little uh, some of, of a work of myself. Uh, it's an uh, it's an interview. It's a, it's a work of myself based on uh, the context was that uh, I live in the city Setogenbos and it's it is one of the cities of the Hanse uh, 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 cities in Europe, and they they get a prize in 2007 of 2008 about that they are the, the the most beautiful old city of Europe. Blah blah blah. And they ask some uh, artist, uh, uh, "What you live in a city? You live in an old city. Is that is that uh, 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 is, is that is, is that an inspiration, or is is that that you um, uh, uh, um, give that um, limits to, to your work?" Uh, and I, for me, for me, it was I want to do something with flags, because uh, in, in 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 the in the past, you, the, the, the flags are very important. Yeah, I can come up the word. <laughs> uh, um, communication thing, and so I based, I based the, f the first time I based uh, uh, the work on uh, the man and the flag, and I'm, uh, uh, the, the the four uh, dancers. They they had a microphone on it. And uh, I used Lisa, and and they and I, I make live uh, samples and play with that. Um, and when I did that, I had I get it. I could be a next. I could do a next step, and that's the, the man, the flag, and the singer. Um, and that then you see now a little uh, um, a little example of of that performance. Um, with a little interview of me in Dutch. Who klinkt een vlag? In de muzikale performance De Man, de Vlag en de Zanger combineert Bas van Dongen zijn fascinatie voor geluid en vlaggen. Als je ergens loopt en, en het, het is een flinke wind, dan hoor je het klapperen van, van die vlaggen. En dan ook zo'n kabel die mee. Nou ja, als je dan verschillende vlaggen naast elkaar hebt die allemaal uh, van andere materialen zijn, nou ja, dat, dan is het feest. Dan sta ik op straat stil, dan lopen we niet door, dan ga ik luisteren. Zeg maar. De zangers en de vlaggen staan voor de vier elementen aarde, vuur, water en lucht. Patrick Leidsman heeft de vlaggen gemaakt en die had ook als opdracht om te kijken om de elementen te vertalen zowel in beeld als, als in geluid. Dus je ziet een luchtvlag en een, en een watervlag en een aardevlag enzovoort. En voor de aardevlag klinkt het beduidend zwaarder zeg maar, dan de luchtvlag. Je hoort het ook in de, de, de geluiden die ik sample van de vlaggen. En je hoort het ook bij de zangers. Het is een combinatie van compositie en improvisatie. Van Donnie Semp op ter plekke het geluid van de zangers en de vlaggen en speelt daarmee. Het klinkt dus elke keer anders. Het is toch intuïtief, maar het is heel erg geleid door wat er op dat moment gebeurt. He, want de, de, hoe spelen de zangers en, en, en de vlaggers de kolkaat samen? Wat doet de omgeving? He, is het wind stil? Dan is het totaal anders dan 
dan, uh, uh, dan als het flink waait. Dus even 20 minuten een, een wereld op zichzelf. Die, 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 uh, ja, die hopelijk mensen mee laat dromen, zeg maar. Ja, voor, la, laat, je, laat, het maar, laat het maar gebeuren. En, en vandaar ook dat. Je hebt een heel goed context. Je hebt ook een goed. een goed way to, to, to get the people to your, to your projects. Because you have a good story. And, and, and you can people you can make uh, people cur curious about your project. I think my my experience is that that uh, when you really have a good context, uh, 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 people came to project. They and and the people that came are, are a mixture of 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 uh, people that come. Use, what used to come to, to art uh, 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 events, but also people come they, uh, to that kind of project that when uh, uh, they never come to it. The, 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 the ordinary people c come to and, and they like it because you you make you explain what you do because you have, you have, you, it's not a work at at its own. Dank u. Do you want to sit here? You want to sit there? I think so. Yes. Uh, change. Cable. Oké. Okay. We sit there. It is short. Next up, Taco Stop. Um, good afternoon. My name is uh, Taco Stolk, as uh, introduced. Uh, I'm uh, with uh, WLFA, which is indeed a studio for conceptualism. Uh, apart from that, I teach at the uh, um, Royal Conservatoire and the Royal Academy of Arts in The Hague. And I see some of my beloved students here in the audience. Um, so what I will talk about is uh, the whole um, composable uh, qualities of, uh, um, of, concept, of contact space, in a, in a sense. Let me start with the um, what... Uh, uh, Dick already said in his introduction a bit uh, 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 a conclusion from uh, how music and for instance visual arts have uh, developed over the uh, years. If we uh, go to uh, uh, structure on one hand, you see that uh, especially in, uh, in music there's still a sense that we all have uh, that uh, a work of art is a uh, kind of closed um, combination of things, combination of elements which uh, relate to each other. And uh, uh, these relationships, which are all internal of these elements, form a composition or any other form of uh, work of art. That's uh, um, um, an interesting and uh, true way of looking at uh, things. And of course, you can, I can say, uh, more about this, but uh, in general, but generalizing, uh, you could see, you could say that there is a focus on that. While in the um, uh, in the visual arts during the uh, uh, 20th century, uh, you've seen uh, uh, different um, um, uh, different um, way of uh, thinking emerging. The, 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 there is this uh, um, idea of a very quite simple uh, uh, element which is uh, um, not in itself structuralized in a, uh, in a way that, there, that, that the focus is there. And apart from that, you have uh, the context, which is the universe, basically, which it uh, relates to. Uh, so to uh, um, summarize that, instead of having this closed universe, this uh, inward-looking thing of which, whether there are notes or other kind of patterns, that you relate to, there is a um, there is a, a thing, and there's the universe, and the work of art is actually in the relationship between these two uh, elements. Uh, those are uh, um, rather um, interesting uh, or deep uh, um, differences in uh, in looking at um, uh, the material you uh, make as an artist. 
Uh, two uh, small examples on the left, we see uh, part of the score of uh, Articulation by uh, uh, Ligeti, which is uh, uh, all these kind of things, thingies which become uh, noises in a closed sound universe. And to the right we have a, a, an, uh, a photograph of, an, uh, of a small object by uh, Joseph Boyce, which is basically nothing more than a, a lemon and a light bulb attached to each other. And uh, so the, on, the, on the left you see the, uh, the complexity of, uh, of things inside this closed universe. And uh, on the right you see that there is a very simple uh, construction uh, as the inside composition, you could say. And uh, the real value of the work is about the fact that uh, the associations, the symbols, the metaphors that uh, are being raised by uh, uh, the whole context that is around uh, the light bulb and the, uh, and the lemon. Um, as I said, it's... Uh, uh, it, of course, it's a generalization, but you could say that uh, um, in the visual arts, uh, thinking about this context has been developed during the 20th century, and uh, uh, which means that, uh, for instance, things like minimalism in, uh, in visual arts means that it's very simple in a way, uh, in a different way than, for instance, minimalism in, uh, in music, where it's about uh, the emergence of pattern, which is inside a uh, structure that might have a... a uh, a quite a simple uh, uh, algorithm or, uh, as such, but uh, which <coughs> creates complex patterns within. There is um, something else going on actually in music, which is usually in context like this or in a more serious music context over overlooked, and that's uh, the uh, phenomenon of pop music, which uh, some of you might have heard of. <laughs> it's, uh, the interesting fact of pop music is that it's, it is dealing with this context a lot, only it's not being seen like it like that, but uh, uh, usually people are uh, doing that. They're not talking about that, but it's a very um, important aspect of what pop music is. It's, much, it's not only the songs, it's also um, the whole context of everything around that. Uh, it's also interesting to see that uh, in pop music, uh, most uh, artists that uh, have become known or become uh, uh, renowned on their uh, artistic uh, value don't come from uh, uh, conservatoires, but they come from art academies. For instance, uh, John Lennon, Yoko Ono, three of the Rolling Stones, um, Brian Ferry, David Bowie, uh, Brian Eno, uh, John Cale, Freddie Mercury, um, some punk people, Malcolm McLaren, Ian Jury, uh, uh, all of the Clash, uh, PJ Harvey, Mark Almond, Jarvis Cocker, uh, electronic people uh, from uh, from Yellow, from the KLF, from Underworld, from Lady Tron, uh, uh, Maya, um, uh, experimental noise people like uh, people from. Uh, um, uh, Throbbing Gristle, uh, Thurwell from uh, Fetus, uh, Eddie Newton from Clock DVA or the Anti Group, uh, Kirsten Nikolai, uh, uh, Alva Noto, and uh, of course, Vieze uh, Fjör of the Jeugd van Tegenwoordig. And this is a rather random compilation of people who all never studied music uh, in a music uh, school but uh, studied, uh, had a, have a background in visual arts. So that makes them somehow aware of their way, or their way of thinking is much more based on uh, um, uh, a contextual way of thinking, which relates to the uh, example, of, for instance, of a boys I, uh, I gave. Um, there is uh, also a, um, uh, a book by Paul Morley. Paul Morley is a, a, an uh, interesting uh, uh, writer and a music journalist uh, from the UK, who uh, in his book Words and, uh, Words and Music um, actually says that pop music maybe doesn't have its roots in uh, um, American uh, 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 black folk traditions, as usually is being uh, um, um, told, but in uh, uh, European Dada, in a way. That all the uh, things that come out of uh, uh, pop music relate to that kind of idea of uh, um, going about with the uh, destruction the destruction or the, the de deconstruction of uh, of the arts and uh, the theatrical uh, aspect of um, of dada and of course the situation is are also uh, important in that uh, sense um, 
So you could say that uh, um, in pop music this, this, this notion of context is, uh, is, is important. Um, there are also experiments because the, 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 this context, because it's not uh, being put in the foreground, is mostly taken over by, uh, of course, uh, the uh, uh, commercialization uh, aspects uh, of uh, record co companies when they still had some uh, influence in uh, things. But um, there are artists who also try to experiment with this whole context field um, in, and how you can work with that in, uh, in uh, uh, creating, actually composing new uh, uh, meaning in, uh, uh, in, in your work, in your music, actually. Um, this same Paul Morley, for instance, is a good example of, uh, uh, of this because he, uh, he is also the founder of ZTT Records, which is uh, an abbreviation of Zang Tum Tum, which is then, of course, re uh, a relation to the, uh, uh, has a relation to the Futurist and the Marinetti, Marinetti um, uh, Manifesto. Um, Zang Tum Tum Records was uh, uh, an experiment in composing a, uh, a record company. Uh, you could say that there is a, a, a predecessor, uh, uh, which is uh, Factory Records, which we know from Joy Division and things like that. Um, but in um, uh, but uh, CTT Records took that uh, uh, much further in the sense that everything in this uh, label was uh, composed as uh, some kind of grand work of art, and that c uh, includes, for instance, the, the fact that there were uh, uh, special collectible series which went through all the artists that were there, so 12 inch by uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood would be uh, uh, succeeded uh, in a, by uh, an album by an, uh, the composer Andrew Poppy. Uh, in the incidental series and you had the action series and things like that. Uh, there was all kinds of, the, the, the sleeves of records were kind of a canvas for um, a theoretical debate, were long pieces of text, which some people thought were uh, pretentious, which you can also think, but uh, uh, it helped shape. Which they were. <laughs> which they were, but there was, a, of course, a, there's an a irony in there too. Um, uh, they helped also shape uh, uh, some kind of theoretical uh, framework uh, which uh, uh, grounded the, uh, uh, the record company. It uh, went as far as uh, choosing uh, the exact um, bouquet of uh, artists that were there to have a, uh, a certain balance within the uh, uh, Gesamtkunstwerk that uh, uh, CTT Records uh, was. And this all, uh, I should uh, uh, say, uh, really from, a, from an artistic uh, uh, um, intention, so not from an intention to make something that uh, earns more money or something like that, but uh, though it relates to, the, uh, uh, to this context of the, uh, of the uh, pop record world, but um, something that uh, is um, uh, meant as, a, uh, as, a, as an autonomous being in, uh, in the world. And within CTT, he also uh, thought up the art of noise, which we might know from early sampling pop experiments. Mm. The interesting thing about the art of, I'm sorry, about the art of noise is that it's the first um, um, group actually that didn't have any concrete face as a human being. It was uh, in all the communications around the uh, Out of Noise, it was uh, um, uh, put down as some kind of abstract being which had his own will and uh, um, uh, which, did, which did his, its thing within the samplers in uh, some studios in uh, London, whatever. Um, the idea of, uh, of, of abstracting the image of uh, the artist, of course, there's also predecessors to that. Uh, could call, uh, I could mention Kraftwerk, for instance, but this is the first example of something which is really abstract as not some kind of alternative to the human artist, uh, 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 some kind of uh, media image which uh, functions as the artist. Um, some other examples uh, from this time... Um, or uh, from later also, but uh, from the same, from a bit later is the Neue Slovenische Kunst, which is an art collective from uh, Slovenia. And they, uh, for instance, they really used mass media to, uh, to create images that were cont controversial, that were really uh, going uh, uh, towards uh, the changing of historical fact, to uh, changing context, things like that. 
Um, they present themselves as being, for instance, as, as uh, organized uh, in the form of an a, a Eastern European uh, or a communist uh, politburo uh, with all kinds of organizational structures that uh, the people that decided what they were going to make and then they had a music department and a theater department and a, and, a, and a visual arts department, design department, philosophical department and it was all as if there was as if they were functioning in an ideal uh, uh, communist uh, um, uh, manner. Uh, well, in fact, they were just also a bunch of guys uh, doing uh, things uh, like uh, everybody else, anyway. But th they did that so well, and they also, in their visions, they were very controversial, be coming from Eastern Europe, where they were, where they were uh, um, usually on the fringe of being uh, um, expelled from the whole uh, uh, artistic world because they. Uh, uh, were seen as too uh, uh, capitalist or fascist. They were seen in the West. They were seen as fascist, for instance, uh, with the use of all kinds of symbols. Um, but in their work, in, in, in the music, for instance, they made also they, they for instance, they made a, a cover version of um, um, One Vision, a uh, song by Queen. And the only thing, the thing they did was translating it into German, and then it becomes, uh, um, it, it, it's called uh, uh, Geburt an der Nation. And uh, then it sounds something like one, uh, ein, uh, ein Volk, ein wahre Glaube, which by just translating it gives a very uh, interesting change of uh, uh, context. Um, apart from that, uh, later there was controversy uh, because uh, it turned out that this German translation of this Queen song was actually nearly exactly the same as the anthem of the uh, um, Hitler Jugend, which raised the question, well, did Queen actually translate it first from German to uh, English or whatever? So, the, and all these kind of double layers are everywhere in the work of, uh, of the Neues of Energy Kunst. And they, um, uh, at the moment, they have, um, some, since some 10 or 15 years, they have uh, uh, made, uh, they have officially made a state, a state without territory, but a state in time. You can get a passport from them and they also, uh, so they, really have, since the, uh, the, the, the Eastern Bloc uh, uh, fell, they uh, made their own state. Um, then a uh, small example is the KLF, which uh, um, uh, too many people, they operate also on two different levels. Um, uh, they operated on, uh, they, they, for instance, for many people they were seen as a, as a band that, that, that made some rave music in the beginning of the 90s. But the whole uh, um, distribution system, and they uh, they tried to make in a situationist way actually uh, um, work with their uh, with with the uh, with the whole image with their records, like for instance uh, uh, having uh, records only in uh, uh, pressed in one or three uh, 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 copies, so uh, collectors would uh, freak out and things like that. They would uh, um, spread rumors that, they, for instance, they won some kind of award once. They uh, that they would come uh, on stage with uh, buckets of uh, blood and uh, uh, pour them over the audience, and they would slaughter a sheep on stage live, which was on prime time BBC television, and things like that. Uh, uh, of course, they, they they didn't do it exactly like that, but they played with this expectation game and things like that and at the height of their uh, um, success they uh, uh, officially quit, they uh, left the music business as they said, and formed the K Foundation which was, which was then uh, something that uh, moved towards the art world. They had uh, uh, for instance uh, uh, an, uh, uh, an award for Rachel Whiteread uh, who won the uh, Turner Prize Award and then they uh, gave her the same night. Gave her the uh, uh, award for the worst artist of the year, which was uh, double the price of the Turner Prize. <laughs> and the interesting fact is that the money that ca came from that award was actually uh, uh, um, well, they, they they also sponsored uh, uh, advertisements on ITV television in Britain, uh, which uh, for twenty thousand pounds. Which means, because ITV sponsored the Turner Prize, so uh, indirectly they, they also sponsored the Turner Prize for exactly the amount of money that uh, uh, was um, involved there. 
Um, as the most famous act, they uh, uh, they organised they. Um, uh, earned uh, a million uh, pounds, which they earned with their uh, success as a rave band. Um, there's a there's a film from that, and uh, it was filmed on an island in uh, uh, in Scotland. They uh, you see them just throwing all these 50 pound notes into a fire, which is a, a, a rather uh, um, emotional thing to uh, to see in a strange way. <laughs> It's completely boring, an hour long people give throwing money in the fire, but the notion that it's money makes it uh, somehow uh, different. And of course, uh, nowadays there's all kinds of, in this notion of, uh, of, uh, of doing uh, this, um, of, of using this context as a compositional tool. Uh, this is just an example of Rasta Noton, which is a label from Germany, uh, with uh, Gaston Nicolai Alvanoto, for instance. We also have this very distinct voice they uh, use, uh, uh, which makes that they are, as a label themselves, uh, interesting enough to follow. Um, apart from the focus on the artists that uh, um, release on that, for instance. Um, so what you see is uh, that uh, in, uh, in, uh, in pop music you have uh, uh, not only have a, f a composition, a song or something, you could uh, uh, extend that to production, uh, there's the carrier, whether that's a CD or a, or a vinyl album or MP3s or uh, something else or whatever, you can have packaging uh, around that, uh, which is a thing. Uh, uh, the artist, its image, uh, his or her image, the, the name, the, uh, uh, who he is, the photographs, um, whatever he or she officially uh, does or not. Uh, you could say the label around that, uh, the context uh, of the artist in which it operates, the, uh, and even the subculture are all elements that are somehow intrinsically part of uh, uh, what uh, pop musicians have, uh, or the, 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 this complex of pop music has developed as, a, uh, as a, an artistic canvas. Um, of course, there is uh, a lot to say about the influence of, uh, of the money makers and the commercial uh, things, but it's, that's uh, one of the reasons why I'm uh, telling uh, this story, I think. That uh, it is uh, um, uh, a pity, apart from the fact that I think that uh, we, you could, as a musician, uh, um, um, also compose all these elements to make a more, much more complex uh, uh, thing that lives in, uh, in in the media world we all live in uh, nowadays. There's also the, the people that are involved with these mechanisms, which are technologies. I mean, marketing or branding, whatever is technology, uh, are really uh, um, focused on uh, uh, economic uh, um, um, goals rather than artistic goals. So there is a whole uh, field to explore, especially for artists and musicians. Uh, focusing on uh, on physical space, actually, as a as a musician, you see that a lot of musicians still have the uh, idea that there is this intrinsic in it, in a world thing, which is the composition, whatever the performance, and then eventually there could be a re registration or the distribution of things. Um, but there's a focus that the starting point is with this. Uh, um, uh, uh, performance or composition, and I think that it would be interesting and it would be um, a tremendous way of uh, um, of expanding our um, uh, our possibilities as as musicians, as composers, as uh, uh, as artists in general to uh, uh, to think in in terms of network space, and when and with network, I don't mean only the electronic networks like the internet or the other things uh, or uh, cell phone networks. I mean net, the network of society, which um, uh, includes, for instance, distributed space. What kind of objects? If you don't hang a, a, a painting on the wall of a of a gallery, but you, or you don't play something in a in, in a in a concert hall, but you uh, uh, take it, you you principally make it uh, for uh, um, for distributed space. Where does it come? If, if I if I have music and I play it on my iPod or I play it at home, it's a totally different experience, which can be composed by the artist in a uh, in a large way. So from uh, thinking from the concept, you can go to all kinds of things like the the objects that come out, the data. So the, the, that could be MP3, or, or the public image, and uh, uh, actions which could be live uh, kind of uh, things. Um, so that's 
looks like branding in a way, or there's a lot of, uh, of this which uh, relates to, uh, to branding. And branding is an interesting thing, like I said before, it's because it's a, it's a technology. But a, uh, um, it's a technology uh, uh, that uses what you could call uh, conceptware or something, which is not, uh, it's, it's something which you could code uh, into uh, reality. Uh, the problem is that branding is uh, usually seen uh, from a perspective of uh, what are we going to do with our brand to uh, to uh, let it make more money or to be more stable or if, or uh, uh, all kinds of other uh, functional um, uses. For instance, how am I going to brand my political party? Um, but um, there is something like autonomous branding, um, which uh, is actually saying, well, okay, this is a technology which is being used for all kinds of economic or other functional things, but why don't we use that as artists? Uh, especially because I think um, as artists you have uh, uh, an obligation in society to... Um, uh, to, uh, to research the forms that surround us to see how these forms react, to see what kind of forms are possible. And uh, in a largely conceptual world, in a, which is filled by branding and all these other, other kinds of things, why not, uh, uh, as artists, uh, research this, this space, these, this, this canvas, the possibilities of this material? What can we compose with branding without having an economical goal, but just by using these, uh, um, um, these channels? Then uh, I, from branding, uh, um, you could say that if you take a brand into account, there's a, an interesting, interesting, it's not visible, yeah, I think it's visible, yeah. Um, there is this, uh, uh, there's a connection with literature, there's also, I could also make a, a, um, a slide with people uh, in uh, pop music that have a literature background somehow. But uh, um, if you, as a last uh, thing before my conclusion, uh, compare, for instance, how to go about with autonomous branding. If you, branding, if you go, if you uh, compare a, f a brand with a fictional character, so a writer who writes a novel creates a character, um, um, then uh, you can see some uh, differences and uh, um, similarities. For instance, if you say, see, if you look at uh, human resemblance, uh, a, f a fictional character. This is a generalization, a bit, of course, again. But uh, um, fictional character looks like a human being, but a, tra a traditional uh, brand doesn't have to look like a, a human being. It's uh, um, uh, it can be like uh, like Apple or like uh, uh, any other uh, brand. It's it's it's. Uh, some abstracted kind of character without having, uh, without thinking about a face, you think about all kinds of other uh, characteristic properties. Um, it also, uh, uh, um, uh, differences because the, all these uh, function, uh, functionalities of branding, a uh, traditional brand doesn't have uh, um, uh, 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 a balanced character, meaning, meaning that a fictional character can be a good character or a bad character, and good fictional or an interesting uh, fictional character has all these good and bad characteristics, while a, a traditional brand tries to be good all the time, and if it do some, does something bad, it tries to repair that. Bad for business. Bad for business, exactly. Um, then there is a, a difference that fictional characters, of course, they, they, they uh, operate in the fictional world, the world of the novel or the theater play or the movie or whatever they uh, uh, play a role in, while traditional brand is uh, uh, operating in real life. Uh, in uh, our world. And uh, um, a fictional character doesn't have an, uh, an external functionality in the sense that uh, what I mentioned, that it doesn't have to make uh, money in that sense. It has a role in uh, the universe it, it, uh, it operates in. But that's not on a meta level uh, created to, uh, to uh, uh, raise uh, votes or uh, to raise uh, money. And a traditional brand does have, to, uh, have this uh, external functionality. So if you take uh, autonomous branding and we uh, compare that, then you see uh, uh, some kind of uh, um, synthesis between those two. That it doesn't have uh, need to have this human resemblance. It can be something abstract, but it can, on the same hand, uh, have this balanced character. Uh, an autonomous brand could be a, a, a bad person or have its uh, uh, bad uh, days or whatever, do wrong things or do right things. The other side could be uh, contradicting uh, uh, itself and things like that. 
Um, it does operate in reality, which is the difference, of course, with the fictional character, and it does not have an external functionality because it's a, f it's a free, autonomous kind of thing. Um, so it's good to think about that uh, in a way of uh, something which is composable. If you uh, d d d design these things as an artist, there's a lot of uh, uh, interesting uh, fields which is uh, largely unexplored, unexplored, I guess, uh, which uh, um, could be uh, very interesting. And to uh, um, conclude then, this is um, the context, uh, what I call context composition, is uh, exactly exploring this field is exploring the fact that you have this large world of contextualizations of concepts to uh, uh, to use at will as a composer. Um, it's uh, it's it's a composition in time, of course. Uh, you can uh, uh, you start somewhere, and every day uh, uh, is a good something else happens with uh, uh, with uh, the 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 work of art. <coughs> you can see the literary things that as a fictional character, it's a, you could say it's a libretto of uh, uh, of context uh, of contextualization uh, of branding is uh, or is uh, of of contextualization is the brand. And the the, uh, the media you can explore whether the, all these mass media or all these other network media are uh, the instruments uh, you can uh, play in that. And as a last slide, it's also uh, interesting that uh, in uh, for a musician that if you think about that uh, um, uh, from uh, uh, point of view of, of, view of improvisation, it's logical that it's it's uh, it's uh, operating in reality. So you can't make a score and just uh, uh, work that out because you have to react on uh, on uh, people. Uh, it's a constant interaction with the audience through all kinds of channels, whether the internet or all kinds of... Uh, there's a lot of branding theory that says that uh, all branding is interaction with an audience, and this is very concrete, uh, uh, true in this sense. And it's, of course, uh, it has a lot of large possibilities to play with themes and they're recurring. It's a composable, really composable field you can uh, explore, but also uh, um, at the moment decide what to do and uh, where to do. So I think that from for art, for musicians, for art in general, but uh, for music, it would be very interesting to think about uh, uh, this field because it is uh, a composable and improvisational field. It's uh, um, it's also uh, uh, interesting because it's it has this notion of uh, possible uh, structurality, and it has. Uh, um, uh, on the other hand, it's very, very necessary, I think, that we come out as artists and we claim these fields, these fields in the world, in order not to let them uh, being uh, uh, used only by people who want to make money or gain votes, but to really see what the forms of, what kind of forms, what topology, what uh, grammar uh, context has, what uh, concepts has, uh, what branding has, and things like that. So, um, uh, let's get to work. Thank you. <laughs> Music anymore. Right. Of course it has. <laughs> I hope I explained that music is structure. Yeah. I mean, it may not have to do with sound, oh, okay. but it has to do a lot with music. Okay. Music is so non verbal. You guys in visual arts are easy to talk because you have 100 years of practice. And music is really still very bad at talking. Can, can, can everybody hear Joel? Because there's a microphone coming. Okay, just say it again with your microphone. <clears throat> is this on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I just think the difference in music this is Joel you're Ryan. really bad at talking about it still. Hmm. Whereas in the visual arts, you guys are really good at talking about what you do. I mean, I'm always impressed. I'm, I was very impressed just now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm always impressed with the discussion. It's been going on for quite a long time, this ability. This, there's, it's a very articulate thing, visual art. Well, it has, to, it has to do with the same thing. Of course, I think that uh, uh, composers and musicians are very good at uh, talking about uh, uh, on an abstract uh, structural no. level. No. <laughs> well, oh, well. <laughs> Can we have more light in the... In well, the then, then again, but, but talking, about, uh, um, yeah. uh, talking about your work is, in fact, a contextual... Yeah, kind yeah. Of, I agree uh, there's an issue of context for, yeah. for lots of kinds of music. I agree that 100%. Yeah. It's just that what we do is actually not language. And so our world may seem close to you. It's very big for us. Do you no, think a lot of people enjoy being in this larger abstract universe, which is music? And it's, it's an enjoyment which is... Uh, 
it's it's intuitive. It's not something we have to. No, but I think that I still articulate. think that the difference is not not that large, coming from my experience in both uh, uh, worlds. But it's it's the intuitive uh, enjoyment of uh, of music is not so much different from the uh, intuitive enjoy, enjoyment enjoyment of a lot of. Uh, uh, visual art, for instance, I think that there's a large, to me, there's a large understand, uh, misunderstanding that visual art is so much as you have to. The general public also thinks that that you need to understand the metaphors and the symbols before you can uh, uh, understand visual art, which makes it actually, which uh, degrades visual art into puzzles. Once you've solved it, you've done you've done the work, and you can do another one, which is bullshit to my to me. I think that visual art is just as much about this uh, enjoyment. Um, uh, but it is like you know, you know about concepts. Concept art is, for instance, is not. Many people think it's about some, this uh, rationalization of uh, of art. To me, it's it's the it's it's uh, it's the opposite. It's actually the aesthetization or the uh, the, the the finding of of of, uh, of this uh, internal enjoyment in concepts mm -hmm. instead of uh, uh, rationalization. In that sense, they are alike. I think a lot. Uh, of course, I agree on on your on the difference. I also notice sometimes. No, but maybe you're, you're referring more to the physical aspect of it. I mean, there's just an, just as much intuition in in, in concepts and ideas as well, there is. Just, I, well, something I'll talk about tomorrow. I think there's just we we have access to a different set of um, cognitive mechanisms in music and dance than mm -hmm. people do in visual arts. And so maybe talking about them is not as easy to do because it's actually the place we go when we don't talk. But that's a cultural difference, not a, not a, uh, I think that uh, has been... I think been it's a biological uh, difference. I think that, of course, there, there are differences between the different senses and, and how we uh, experience them. But uh, things like visual music, for instance, still work. And the, the, uh, um, uh, while there is also a lot of uh, um, um, contextual stuff put in forms of audio, of hearing, which still works. But uh, we might not perceive that as music, but as uh, uh, radio play or uh, whatever. But uh, I think that apart from these senses, you could also say that uh, uh, your self-consciousness is in fact a sense, to be able to notice that you're thinking. So and uh, uh, so there's also uh, 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 sensorial uh, um, enjoyment in that, but uh, I think that that a lot of these differences are uh, also they also stem from 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 uh, um, cultural differences that have emerged during the 20th century. We also have to be careful not to make any kind of discourse around something a diminution. Like it's not always diluting it, right? Mm -hmm. By having a larger sort of view of what what that practice is. You know, can add to it, and I think that's kind of what you're talking yeah, exactly. about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying to stop stop making sounds. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, uh, not at all. It's yeah. not a purity Please. issue, right? Yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I'm all on the side of content. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to, you know, there's there's a lot to be said about this, and but but it's a, a lot of it is also a very general discussion. I, I would like to sort of hear Jamie's take on it first, and then we can have yeah, good you know, We have all the perspectives, and we can see where we we can take it. Um, you need to? Yes. Yeah. And, and of I, course, I think it'll all reach yeah, yeah.